Yep, good to go. Good. All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Geek Freaks. I am Frank, and today I'm joined by Jonathan. Hey, hey, y'all. All right. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and go over. We have the Betty Better Emmys that we're going to be doing throughout the month uh, into September. So we're going to do a couple each week, and we have all of our categories in order and what's going to be in each of them. So, uh, John, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the two that we're putting up for this week, and then we'll kind of talk about what we think each one should be at. Uh, the I, I looked up the qualifying like times and stuff like that. It's from June 1st, 2019 to May 31st, 2020. That's when it has to be for it to be uh, okay. So the first one will be Best Superhero Series. Uh, we have four for each of these. The first one will be Watchmen Season 1 from HBO. The Boys Season 1 from Amazon. Arrow Season 6 on The CW. And Harley Quinn Season 1 on DC Universe. Do any of those stand out to you? Um, <laughs> I'd have to say Watchmen, though I still haven't finished watching it. But oh, it is really good. So much better at the end, too. <laughs> yeah. It's just hard, you know, the, the wife's afraid of that kind of show, but, um, but yeah, I haven't watched The Boys just because the plot doesn't look, doesn't sound great to me, but I have to say Watchmen. The Boys is really good. Um, I would say the one that I think is going to be a sneaker hit that everybody's probably going to be like, I, I might actually have voted for it, actually, would be Harley Quinn. Harley mm. Quinn's a super good show. Uh, at DC Universe, it's now coming to HBO Max. They actually just got uh, uh, Harley Quinn season two, like last month. Very, very good. Uh, close to Venture Brothers, almost. Think of that. Um, I would. I wouldn't be surprised if that that sneaks up on us. Watchmen, though, very good, of course. Uh, I actually like all these shows. So, and then Arrow's kind of. You had to pick one from the Arrowverse, so I went with the Arrow. But yeah. Uh, all right, let's go to Best Sci-Fi. That'll be the other category you guys are voting on for this week. First, we have Picard season one from CBS All Access. Stranger Things season three from Netflix. The Mandalorian season one from Disney Plus, and Rick and Morty season four from Adult Swim. Now, Rick and Morty is only halfway through, I believe, all the seasons, but um, we have enough to vote for. Uh, what are your thoughts on these ones? These, this is hard because these are all all yeah. such great shows, and they're all so different. They're not like you know, it's not comparing a Star Trek and a Star Wars. Like, I mean, it is, but not like tick for tat. They're they're different so much that you know you like them for different things. Right, uh, but I'd have to go for Picard. I mean, they brought seven and nine back into the fold, so I can't betray my really my Jerry over Ryan. Mandalorian. Like to me, I think Mandalorian yeah. is the one that's going to be hard to beat. Baby Yoda's cute, but he is like just brought in to be to be marketable. I feel, and it's, it's a great show and, and entertaining. But I have to go with Star Trek. Yeah, uh, my vote's probably going to go Mandalorian. Uh, yeah. But Stranger Things season three, I think, really saved the entire season uh, series because season two was yeah. so bad, mm -hmm. um, and then Rick and Morty. This is actually, everybody considers its weakest season. I still really enjoyed it, but yeah. So I think that's going to be good to go. That's going to be fun. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do our quick Audible ad. We're going to do this real fast, guys. Uh, guys, sign up for audible.com, or uh, sorry, audible trial backslash geek freaks. Uh, and you guys get one book each month for $14.99 and then two uh, Audible originals. And uh, we're reading right now uh, Shadows Rising by Madeline Rowe. We're pushing back the book club by one week because Squeaks has his reservation or whatever that's called, you know, the military thing this upcoming weekend. So we're pushing it back one more week. And uh, so we'll do that next week. So you guys have two weeks now. You can easily catch, catch up on the book and then we'll have we have a, a books we'll be voting for for next week. Um, we didn't have you on last week, John. Do you want to throw in your book that you want to put in there or no? No. Nah, Sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to start reading that. one and then I can give some feedback on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to, <laughs> so I was like, well, maybe I should bring this up to Jonathan before we start recording. All right. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get some news here. Spider-Man is joining Marvel's Avengers, uh, but only for PlayStation. So we have Marvel's Avengers, this super awesome game coming up we can't wait for. Uh, all the reviews that are coming in so far are outstanding about how each player feels unique and different. Uh, they look like they belong from a different game. I heard um, comparisons from, I think, a Kotaku article. Do I have it here? Polygon article um, that each character feels unique in the fact that like Thor feels like he's from God of War and uh, you know so everybody's kind of pulling from different places and then Sony's coming out and putting Spider-Man in the PlayStation only version which really upsets me I'm going to be owning a PS5 but I plan on playing this game on PC and now I can't play Spider-Man and it's even worse because he's super unique uh, do you think this is a good idea for them to make an exclusive character that's so important to the, to the Marvel Universe 
I don't think so. I think it it just devalues the Marvel universe, the Marvel game in general. It yeah. it makes Marvel look like they can't control their own, you know, game, their own uh, product. And so, yeah, to me, it just it kind of cheapens it. It's we're splitting hairs over which individual character in the game you're allowed to play based on what platform you buy it on. That's right. just petty. They're just being childish. Like yeah. if you're allowing Spider Man to be a part of the MCU, it's everything not just see you but the well, marvel this is not yeah it's not this yeah. and this is with marvel's approval i mean it's not like the the thing though is sony does have the rights to spider-man we have a spider-man game and stuff like that so that's why it's like easier for them to do it but yeah. I, in my opinion it's like either have them you know have them early for playstation fans are cool with that and then eventually the rest of us get him or don't have them at all like it's it this is not even it's not like a skin this is a whole nother part of the game yeah I think what would got would have gotten them a little bit less backlash at least is like you're saying start without having him at all and have him as a DLC only for PlayStation or something like that so that well, he, he will, could be he added will be to that. Game. He will be that. Oh, 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 okay. But the problem is, is he's kind of come with his own missions, he's going to come with, you know, of course his own playstyle and for a big portion of the people it'll come out like so Hawkeye will come out, then the next character after that will be Spider-Man for like a third of your audience, third of the players. It just feels but it's like, not something that every every PlayStation player will have, right? It's one you have to you have to pay extra to have Spider Man added to your game, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think yeah. that's it's still unfortunate, but it's a little more fair, I think. Yeah. Uh, so this is you know, again, Sony has the rights to this. It's likely going to be probably closely designed to the Spider Man from the Spider Man games. They have the Miles Morales game coming up as well, uh, so it's likely it'll look like that. It'll probably have that same costume on. Um, although Crystal Dynamics, the guys that are developing this game, says that they're excited to have their own version of Spider-Man in the game. We'll see how it goes. There might be a skin or something like that. Uh, this, oh, here it is. Here's in the notes. Uh, coming 2021, he will be offered free if you have the base game. Okay. So it's even worse now. Now I'm even more yeah. upset about this. Right. I, if it's a skin, I'm totally okay with it. Or, if so, or even early access for PlayStation, guys. I'm fine with that. But it just feels like uh, it's too big of a character. Make it somebody nobody cares about. Like, not not that nobody cares about him, but like maybe She Hulk. She's not a very big character. Sure, she's a PlayStation only. But Spider Man might be the biggest Marvel character. It's like putting Wolverine up there. I mean, this might be one of the biggest Marvel characters out there. Yeah, it's it's hard to say you can have something Marvel and not have a staple character like that. It's like saying Iron Man or Hulk or Thor just can't be a part of it, but they'll be on the side in this other separate little thing. It's like it's yeah. It's breaking up the team, and it's just not right for the audience, for the consumers. What? And I'm thinking on the top of my head here. If Xbox were to get an exclusive that could rival this, I can't even really think of what. But it might be actually Wolverine. If if we got Wolverine and they didn't get him, but I mean, there have to be something huge for PC and Xbox. I don't know. I just feel I really feel slighted. And I again, I'm gonna own the PS5. I could easily just own this game on PlayStation and have a problem at all. It just feels like it's unfair for it to be such a big exclusive, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, All right, we have uh, the PlayStation State of Play. This is their uh, kind of announcement of new games. This one was really kind of subpar, in my opinion. It wasn't anything major. Uh, they're really excited for Godfall. It looks okay. It's a looter shooter. Uh, going over the list, so John, instead of us like actually listing off everything that was announced, what were anything that anything there that you wanted to talk about? Uh, one that I was watching that looked pretty cool was the Pathless. Okay. Um, it's an open world. Oh, there's there's a, a lot of good to it. You go around and shoot these targets and you have to explore and try to find your way. The, one of the coolest things is that it doesn't have a map. It's a big open world game and you have no way of knowing where you're at, which kind of reminds me of Minecraft when you start exploring and you kind of get lost and you have to hopefully find your home where all your stuff is. Um, but you can do like this spirit vision or whatever so you can see you know through the trees and stuff. You can see landmarks far away. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. And, and the whole game, you have this, uh, hawk with you or eagle. Well, I think it's a hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Some um, sort of bird, yeah. And it seems like it's like a spirit animal or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's cool looking bosses and, and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Only thing I don't like about the game is as notices, noticing this when I was watching the, the trailer about it is, uh, there's these floating like gems or whatever they call it. You have to hit to gain energy throughout the game and they just don't fit well with the terrain to me they just stand out far too much that if they were a certain kind of flower that was growing and you would shoot it and pop it and it would release some gas or something at least it would be a plant that's growing in the earth instead of just a mystical gem that happens to be floating and they're scattered yeah. across the map so 
thought that was kind of a it feels kind of old school to have like just a floating gym you know i don't know to me it feels like star fox when we could have now we have so many more creative ways of doing things that are very similar something that can feel more natural yeah but looks like a cool game either way yeah, uh, I'm excited for the new DLC for uh, Control. They're adding Alan Wake, which uh, he's... The Alan Wake games have been free on Epic Game Store, and I think they've actually put one of them up there twice. Um, so you guys probably get your hands on it for real cheap. But there are these games that are like in a Stephen King book, where you're playing this character who's kind of going through this like mystery horror game. Uh, and he's a really interesting character. Some The fans of him are like su- super fans. Squeeze is one of them. And they're adding him to Control. I think he's going to fit into the world quite well. Controls this beautiful uh, game with so many particle effects going on. And it's just awe-inspiring. So to see Alan Wake join the, t- the crew, I'm really excited for that. And uh, the new story, too. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no. I, I watched a little bit about that new Vader Immortals game. That looks pretty awesome, too. Yeah. You, what, um, what, what, is, what goes on with that game? What's the so I, didn't, there, I watched like the little two-minute trailer, not the right. hour-long reveal where they break down everything in it. Um, but so I, just by the title Immortals, I imagine you must be... Um, like a cyborg in a in a drone or something. Like that. I don't know, but it it just looks looks aesthetically pleasing. It looks cool. Um, Actually, you I thought the, you were playing as Vader in that one. Am I not? Am I mistaken? You do use the Force, so I don't. I, I'm assuming you're Vader, but I don't. I think you're Vader resurrected. Um, oh, okay. Cause, but you have the power of the Force. So that's what I'm thinking. You can't quite be a full drone. You must be like a cyborg. Like me and Vader was a cyborg to an extent. Right. Yeah. He was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I I think I'm gonna try it out though. That's but it is on the PlayStation only, so we'll see. Maybe well, I'll... Come on over to my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait over here. Uh, we have Auto Chess joining finally. This is, this is a big game on PC that everybody's been mimicking. It's coming October 31st. Uh, Temtem, a lot of fun. And so this is kind of like, a, it's a Pokemon game. Uh, it's not you know not owned by Pokemon, but they're, it's a copy of it. But it's much, much harder. I'm actually stuck on the first dungeon, or the first gym leader. And... Uh, same with Daniel. I think Daniel actually got her down. I, I, I'm still stuck. I can't beat her. And it's just crazy. You have to just go back and just keep farming and farming and farming until you finally get him down. And uh, it's it's pretty intense. Um, Godfall is the one that everybody's talking about. It's this looter shooter. I think it's going to be okay. Uh, PlayStation has much better things to offer, in my opinion. Uh, we have Hitman 3 is going VR. Uh, you can actually play all three in the trilogy in VR once this game comes out, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have some more... Uh, Gameplay footage from Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. If you're a Crash fan, I think this is going to be really good. It's actually following up on some of the best features that were in the past Crash games. So we're getting you know quite a bit of cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, then there's one game that we want to make sure to really bring up here. Is Aeon Must Die. It seems like a pretty basic game. It's like this 2D fighter game. Uh, kind of think of like the old school Street Fighters kind of thing. Pretty simple, right? It's developed by Limestone Games and published by Focus Home Interactive. But this is what's crazy. Okay, so they're announcing it and everything like that. But right before it drops, there's this uh, public Dropbox, which is where you can kind of put files. Kind of like we use Mediafire for a lot of things. So kind of like that. Uh, containing materials from the developers. Um, and it, it's full of accusations saying that, hey, this game was stolen from us and stuff like that. So uh, the group claims that, that this is the team that actually made the game and was forced to leave by Limestone due to unbearable work conditions uh, with endless crunch uh, harassment, abuse, corruption, and manipulation. That's all in quotes. Uh, They also claim that the company uh, and the entire IP was uh, covertly taken from the founder. Uh, It's infringement on the IP of people who have worked on scenes from uh, from it without contract or uh, were not paid at any point. So it's a group of about 12 that are um, really pushing on this thing, saying that that was taken from them. They have a lot of good proof. They actually released a version of the trailer as well on a, a like a YouTube channel they made themselves, and it's missing a couple scenes, but it is essentially the same footage. Uh, so there might be some scenes that were added in that were made post. Uh, they uh, they also accused the Limestone Limestone CEO Yarsolv Lysek Lyseko. We'll go with that uh, of sending threatening letters and unlawfully firing everyone right before they had like this agreed. Uh, resignation date. There's like so much going on there. Like we're going to resign. He fired them all to mess up their benefits. Uh, so there's that going on. Uh, it's kind of a mess. What do you think's going on with this? Do you think that they just like totally just push everybody to the brink when they ask for assistance in pay? They dropped them. Do you think that's what's going yeah. on here? 
I think, yeah, I mean, it's... Was that here in America? Is this not a foreign co- company? I think it's a foreign one. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. But yeah. Okay, I'm like, we have so many laws against this kind of treating your employees. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but if it's not here, then Lord knows what they allow. Uh, but I think that's ridiculous. I think as Americans with our standards of work environments and you know how you need to treat your employees, I think we need to boycott buying this game until this, this case is settled and these employees are are you know. LA. compensated for their Angeles. abuse and neglect and losing their jobs and everything and then if they're you know whatever satisfied then sure sell the game and everyone buy it that's cool if you want to support it but yeah yeah we can't encourage that kind of definitely any game that's being produced by that kind of mistreatment then uh yeah we don't want to endorse that i fully agree with you uh apparently they are from la so they're in america there's definitely ways of getting around these protections right you could, that's why they're able to sue they're they're yeah. they're in the middle of lawsuits and stuff like that. Uh, well, they 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 were saying that basically they have tried all the legal avenues, and at this point now that they're just going to the public to kind of show their case because yeah. they're hitting against walls. Uh, but they are. But Limestone is in LA, so presumably everything is. Um, yeah, I, this is where the consumers need to step up and like if you don't agree with these work practices, which I don't personally agree with that. I think we need to fight crunch culture as much as possible. Mm-hmm. As much as I play Red Dead Redemption Two. I have to play it knowing that there's a lot of people who miss time with their families to make this game done by a certain time. Uh, and so I think we need to be smart about this. If you really feel strongly against crunch culture, don't buy this game. Don't participate. Uh, if you do, then you need to buy it with the knowledge that you are buying a game that was made uh, under harassment. If this is true. So uh, we have, of course, Limestone came out and said, and uh, so did... Um, Focus Home Interactive, which is the publisher, saying that as the publisher of the game of this video game, Focus is carefully looking into these allegations and will draw necessary conclusions if they are proved to be well founded, and uh, then take all appropriate measures. So the publisher is saying they're going to look into it, and if the developer did do wrong, Limestone, then they'll take actions afterwards. Uh yeah, I don't know, man. It's one of those things I, you hate to hear about it. You know, you don't want anybody to feel like they're being worked to the bone to hit a certain deadline. Yeah. It's unfortunate that that's how it is, though. Yeah, or being threatened and harassed at work. Yeah, yeah, cool. they're they're abused and everything. So, uh, yeah. we're gonna keep an eye on that one. It's it's a small game, but doesn't matter. It should still, you know, yeah. keep we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, we have another thing to announce. We got Pikmin Three Deluxe is heading to the Switch. Uh, Nintendo announced Pikmin 3 Deluxe will be coming to the Switch on October 30th. So that's real soon, really. Uh, This is an upgraded version of the 2013 game uh, with additional difficulty modes and missions and all the DLCs that were uh, originally released. You will also be able to play for the first time in-game co-op with your friends. Uh, You should be able to do it online and couch co-op. I've never played a Pikmin, but I've always wanted to play a Pikmin. Uh, I don't think you're familiar with this, right? Because we never had Pikmin growing up. Yeah. No. So the idea is that you're like this little dude stuck on a planet, maybe even Earth. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, it has to be another planet. And there's like these little bugs that are helping you out, different colors, and different colors are good at different things. And you're basically trying to find a way to leave the planet. Uh, it looks really neat. And the upgraded graphics look outstanding. They actually look almost claymation. They look really good. So I'm excited to pick this up uh, as a first-time player and uh, and get back into this Pikmin world and check it out. So uh, you guys can check that out October 30th. And let us know if you've played Pikmin in the past, what your guys' thoughts are. Maybe we we'll can get some, uh, I don't want to say emulations, but, you know, we'll find a way. We'll find a way to play the earlier games and maybe we'll review them on the way up to this. They're pretty fun. Uh, what games have you been playing recently, John? Um, not a lot. I've been playing Satisfactory like crazy, but I'm kind of <laughs> ready to, yeah, kind of ready to try something else out. Yeah, I took a break on Satisfactory. I was in the middle of a big, I was trying to put a train that wraps around the whole map. Map, yeah. And I'm like three quarters away. I'm just like, okay, I need to play something different. Yeah. Um, what am I playing now? I'm playing some Far Cry. I just, I kind of go through all my first player games or story mode games, or whatever, and just finish them so I can delete them off the hard drive. So I've mm-hmm. just finished the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 remake. An amazing story, of course. But I finished that one and got it off. Uh, and now I'm going through Far Cry 5 and about halfway done with that one. But yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about Fall Guys later on. I think that's a good game for you to pick up. That's a lot of fun to play. Check that uh-huh. out. Uh, the other game you should be playing, and I as well, is Overwatch. Overwatch yeah. Summer Games is here. <laughs> the event runs from August 4th to August 26th and includes Lucio Ball and many skins. So I'm going to first explain what Lucio Ball is and then we'll go over some of the skins. Lucio Ball is a game mode similar to Rocket League 
with big, colorful arenas and fast-paced soccer games. So uh, you're in this kind of futurescape soccer arena, right? And you're able to run on the walls because Lucio's able to run on the walls. And you have his hand cannon where you're able to like push things away from you. So you use those to play soccer. It's like three on three, I think it is. Uh, maybe five on five, actually. It could be five on five. And the idea is, yeah, you're playing soccer, so you have to defend and stuff like that. And you're really fast paced because you're Lucio and you're, you could actually increase your speed and stuff like that as Lucio. So it's really fun. Now they're adding what's called Lucio Ball Remix, where there's going to be two balls in the game at all times and more balls dropping periodically. So it just becomes right. this madhouse pinball game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Have you played right. Lucio much? Uh, no, I've, I've, well, I mean, I've tried several times, but I'm pretty terrible. You're mostly a DPS, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I try to stick to the same, like, two or three people and, and not mix it up too much. I die enough as it is with them, so <laughs> since I play so infrequently, uh, I got to try to practice. It's a bit since I've played with you. What, who, who are your mains? Um, Soldier 76 and mm. Reaper. You know, and I Reaper. Reaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reaper, man, when you see Reaper in the professional games, like how they they set him up to just go in oh, and yeah. storm people. And then like those pros too, they know exactly when, because he, he heals as he shoots. So the, oh. the pros know exactly when to push and then back off real quick. Like they know how much his heal's doing and they're like, okay, that's too much damage, I gotta go away. It's amazing right. watching the pros do it. Uh, okay, so with this also comes a ton of skins. Uh, we have three free ones that we're gonna be talking about. The Union Jack Tracer Epic Skin. So you guys get these skins by play, by winning nine games each week. The first week will be the Union Jack. When this podcast comes out, it might be too late. I'm not positive on that. Um, actually, it might be the day. <laughs> so get nine games in real quick. This game basically looks like uh, Tracer with a... Um, I think it's the British flag on her? Yeah, the Union Jack. Yeah, the British flag on her. The next one, the must-own for me, is Sandcastle Bastion epic skin. And his hat, his head is like one of those. Remember when you have like those plastic castle forms you use with sand? Oh, yeah, up, yeah. And then you flip it upside down. That's what his like head a plastic is. Plastic bucket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has like a random <coughs> yellow shovel stuck to him somewhere and stuff. It looks really good. <laughs> and then the other one I got to get is Ice Cream Orissa epic skin. It looks like she's like made out of ice cream. And she's also working at like a Cold Stone Creamery. And uh, it looks really good. So... Uh, you guys can pick all those up for free. You just got to win nine games each week of the event, which is pretty easy. And then there's all kinds of other ones you can unlock. There's uh, surfboard skins and um, there's a life, uh, lifeboat skin, Farah and stuff like that. Lifeguard, Farah, all kinds of cool skins. We'll be streaming those throughout the weeks. So uh, come on by, guys, and visit us on Twitch. And we're going to try to stream on Twitter more as well. So we'll do that as well. Next up. We have Blizzard announces a digital BlizzCon for early 2021. Man, I, one of the biggest disappointments of this whole thing is no BlizzCon. It's what we look forward to every year. It's literally my vacation. I just like save up my vacation for BlizzCon. And then we go there for a week and just party and have fun. Uh, you haven't gone yet, but you're looking forward to going to the next one is what I hear, right? Yep. So uh, this one, because this year's canceled, they're going to be doing a BlizzCon 2021 uh, early for digital. And this is what uh, J. Allen Brack said. We are planning on channeling the spirit of BlizzCon into a virtual event in the early part of next year. We're really fortunate to have a passionate and engaged community that's really looking forward to what we're creating and what we're working on. And we're looking forward to sharing that, sorry, and we're looking forward to sharing what the teams have been working on for that event. So that's from Jalen Brack. He's the president of Blizzard. Um, so... Let's think of what we could have announced here at the end of this thing. We got, during the 2019 BlizzCon, we got announced Overwatch 2 and, and Diablo 4. So I'm assuming we're going to get like release dates for those, right? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but I'm wondering too, are they going to have hot new news or are they going to be releasing the stuff that they should be should have released a few months ago? I mean, they're, they're going to have yeah. some updated stuff by then, right? It's going to be at least six months late, so. Yeah, it'll uh, it'll be a few months late, so I wonder if they're going to have like, Things that wouldn't even be in the BlizzCon. Yeah. 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 That'd be kind of, that'd be nice. But then again, are, are they doing this in 2020, in the beginning of 2021 and still have the potential of having their later BlizzCon? Or is this from so. now on all going to be digital? You want to make a subset Blizzard, then, well, I don't think they'll, because they make a ton of money on this event. Yeah. There's like 30 to 50,000 people that show up every year. They each ticket sells for 200, 250 bucks. They make a lot of money on this event. There's no way they wouldn't do it. But, um, yeah, they could be canceling 2021's actual BlizzCon. That would be very frustrating. We'll yeah. have to see how that goes. Because um, to me, that de that determines the weight of what they're going to release at this. Because if there's big stuff that they're working on, they're going to wait to reveal it 
for the live event if they're yeah. gonna have it but like a new starcraft yeah. or something like that that's kind of the big thing that we we're yeah. expecting for the next year's blizzcon uh mm-hmm. this is good the starcraft announcement i would love that uh looking at what we have here uh out of overwatch 2 and, and diablo 4 other than the release dates do you think we'll get more skins or new gameplay what are your what are your predictions on those two yeah i mean i, I imagine skins and different like cheap easy dlc stuff but um I, nothing, I nothing would, big, right? I don't. It just yeah. to me, it feels like this is gonna be kind of a letdown in, overall. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I think they're just trying to appease the audience. I mean, they want to have something to give everybody, but they they know everybody's pissed off that the live event was canceled or postponed yeah. or whatever. And there's, I'm sure they still have some some exciting stuff they wanted to get out there without just dumping it online. Um, so this is just their way of releasing it. But I don't think it's gonna be anything that was. It's not going to be anything like going to the live event, I'm sure. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, I don't even think we'll have that many panels because we we normally have all kinds of fun panels that are fun to see. If they are existing, it won't be the same, of course. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I would I would agree. With you. I think we're just mostly going to get new skins for Overwatch that they're going to be showing off. Maybe the PVE mode, more of the PVE mode that was announced earlier. Uh, for Diablo Four, we probably will get a sneak peek at some more of the classes that are going to be there. Um, but it's it's kind of just. It's not really exciting news. It's not yeah. like a new game or something like that or a new expansion. Uh, that we're, Honestly, we're if they have some good, exciting news, they might as well save it and try to do the live event. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the big one I'm, in, I'm assuming would be StarCraft 2, really. Uh, we also have some uh, a big patch for World of Warcraft Shadowlands uh, that should be announced about that time. So Shadowlands is coming out November, maybe December. So when this BlizzCon rolls around, it'll be time to announce the next big raid, maybe the next two big raids. They did that for uh, World of Warcraft Legion, and it worked out very well. Uh, when Legion came out, they announced, like, eventually we're going to Argus, which was like three patches into the future. And the whole time, we were getting hyped the whole time. It worked really well. And we're learning from this, uh, uh, with, the, with the beta of Shadowlands, that they're, they're really focusing on doing that again. They're trying to, like, mimic how successful Legion was and forget how bad Battle for Azeroth was. So we could be seeing that. We could be seeing this hype of like, hey, we're going to be seeing Arthas come back or something huge like that. Uh, other projects that will likely be addressed, we have uh, Diablo Immortals, which is their awful booed uh, mobile game. They got crazy booed at BlizzCon. Um, they're probably about time for them to release that. They probably released it that day. Uh, and then Burning Crusade Classics is my prediction. They uh, have put out an email to all the people playing World of Warcraft. Not a lot, but not all, but a lot of them. Uh, asking like, hey, if you guys, if the if classic for Burning Crusade were to come out, how would you want it to come out? Would you want to copy your character or whatever? Uh, showing that they are working on a Burning Crusade classic. Classic is hugely successful, and it's actually made Activision a ton of money. And so uh, I could see them announcing that as well. That'll probably be one of the big announcements. But yeah, it's just not the same. And, and we're really looking forward to Blizzard, BlizzCon, the next one we could actually go to. This one, we will still do a daily uh, episode for if it's like a three-day event. We'll do a daily episode for that. That should be fun. And then it's probably going to be a virtual ticket, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I wonder if it's free. <laughs> Depending yeah, on how the you know pandemic's going and everything, when this time comes, it'd be cool if, if things have uh, cooled down and, and whatnot. Uh, if, like, local comic book shops or something like that would host a small event to, yeah. uh, you know, invite people to come and watch it there, do games and stuff there, too. Like, the GameStops could definitely do that, for yeah, sure. That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe what I'll do is I'll set up that projector we were talking about in my backyard and go. make it a big party. <laughs> That'd be cool. All right. Uh, we have Project X Cloud app getting blocked by Apple. So the Project X Cloud app, this is the app that's going to let you play your Xbox games everywhere. And um, the idea is that you're streaming it with the, like you do with Stadia, it's Project X Cloud for Microsoft and Xbox. So um, Apple has confirmed through Business Insider their website. Uh, that they will uh, not be supporting the game uh, game streaming services like Stadia or xCloud on the iOS. They they released a statement that basically said that they're meant to be a safe place for both the users and the developers. They didn't really give any like specifics. It was really weird. It was kind of like all this like legalese kind of like PR. We're we're a good company, but not giving actual ex- specifics. But the people that are kind of close to Apple say the reason for this really is because you can't review. Uh, say, say, okay, so say we're playing Sea of Thieves um, and you want to play Sea of Thieves through the iOS, you can't leave a review for Sea of Thieves on Apple's products. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like if you were to download an app from the App Store, it has reviews for it. But you can't mm-hmm. do that for like Sea of Thieves because 
the review is for the Xbox app, not for Sea of Thieves. I see. And yeah. that that seems like it does kind of open an avenue for liabilities and stuff because at which it's the internet, everything's out there, but um, Apple would have no control or regulation of any of the content coming in and out of their system anymore. So when you download an app through the through the Apple App Store, you know they've gone through it and approved it, and they know it inside and out. So now it's it's a Apple authorized app, and it goes in their store. If you have something like this, then content can be pushed in and out with an open door, and they have no yeah no regulation and no way to make any kind of money on it too. That's very true. The way you put it, open door is a good good way to put it. Because yeah, the app is the open door, and through that app, you could play M rated games as a kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, whatever's available on the on the yeah, it's too bad that you couldn't have to like approve it on the PC first or the Xbox first, then have access to it on your phone. Yeah. I don't know. They, I, they would just have to partner with with the uh, Apple and have their app made like through them or integrated so that each game that you want to play would be certified and all yeah. that jazz. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, because they have the Apple Arcade. Maybe mm-hmm. they could make it part of the Apple Arcade where like each game gets its own reviews. Yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, okay, so Xbox says that they will not be able to uh, bring the Project X Cloud app to the iOS under these circumstances, uh, but they're going to continue to working on Apple's approval. So this is from the statement that they made to uh, TheVerge.com. Uh, Unfortunately, we do not have a path to bring our version of our vision of cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to gamers on the iOS via the Apple App Store. Apple stands alone as the only general purpose platform to deny consumers from cloud gaming and game services like Xbox Game Pass. We are committed to finding a path to bring cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate to the iOS platform. So that's another big thing too. It's not just the ability to stream, it's the subscription. Because you subscribe mm-hmm. to Xbox Game Pass, like I do, uh, and that's something that normally, like even Hulu and stuff like that, they want you to do that through the the iOS if possible. So there's all kinds of little legalese going on here. Yeah. The, it's it's a little tough. I, I'm an Apple owner, man. I really and I love my iPhone. This is the first time where I'm like, you might tempt me another way because you guys are not playing ball with Xbox. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? The only thing I like about my iPhone is how intuitive it is it's very user friendly you've yeah. used it since the first one they haven't changed in big steps since the beginning it's always small things you know how to move your apps and find mm-hmm. different stuff whatever uh but i don't like that that's i mean that's the staple issue with them is they don't interact with anybody else they don't play a game with anyone else you have yeah. all of their products or you have none of them because they won't work with anything so i think hopefully this puts some pressure on apple to be a little more open to what the consumers want and exactly. make their, I mean, y- y- you'll have to do it down a certain avenue. It'll have to be within a certain constrictions, but you can make it to where your stuff interacts with other technology and other systems and where you can still charge. Like like you're saying, per game, you can download Minecraft on an iPhone because it was, you know, established on its own a long time ago. Yeah, it has so, its own reviews. Yeah. yeah, you can do that with each game independently so that you have the control, but I know that they want to be able to still keep their thumb on it. it they don't want a, their phones to be like, like a jailbroken phone or something but that's good um, to put it too yeah also microsoft could say you know what okay you're we have we have the money and to to work with this if you guys aren't going to play ball then we're going to have to start competing on the phone phone uh, platform too and start making their own you know slow down on the developing more xboxes because we know that's yeah. just going to pc and focus that attention into making mobile devices yeah, they, they tried to make a phone before and and it flopped, but that was because they were like trying to really push the Windows 8 thing. I think yeah. I think Microsoft actually has a chance of doing well with it now. Uh yeah. especially if they're to lean into the gaming aspect because gaming is becoming really, really big. Actually, uh through schooling through school I had to do a report on video games and it's like the average gamer's age I think was thirty three. And it kind of surprised me. I was like, Well, that's I that's older than I'd expected. That's pretty good. Uh so um yeah, I, I the market's out there. That's actually a good option is that they actually make an Xbox oriented, like the Razer has the Razer phone is a good example. Yeah. And it's totally meant for gamers. That's what it's exactly what it's meant for. Another avenue is what uh, Steam Link has done. So Valve went through with their Steam Link on the iOS. This works because you actually have to go on the PC and purchase the game on the PC first, then stream it to your phone. So maybe mm-hmm. there's a way to have an iOS authorization app through your PC where you're like, okay, on the PC, I said it's okay for me to play Sea of Thieves and Halo Master Chief Collection. 
So those two for sure I can play on the iOS, but oh, I didn't check off the grounded one, so I can't play grounded on my phone. Maybe they right. could do something like that. Yeah. Through your iTunes on, on your PC or something? Yeah, iTunes is going to link into it or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I got to update iTunes all the time. <laughs> right. So bad about that. <clears throat> all right. Walmart is launching a uh, their drive-in theaters. This is kind of crazy. Uh, we just went to the drive-ins yesterday, watched some Black Panther. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys stuck around for the second movie, right? All the way through? No, we started it. I didn't realize I had it wrong. It was I thought it was gonna be Jumanji. It was uh Spider Man into the Spider Verse. I thought it was that one. I thought <laughs> it was that one. And I was like, that one if it's that one, that one's worth staying for because that's super good. Um yeah. it's the probably the <clears throat> probably the best Spider Man movie there is. But um uh, but yeah, you guys didn't stick around? No, we stayed for like twenty minutes of it and then packed up and left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Walmart's doing their own drive-ins now. It's a good way to be socially distanced and stay safe, but still enjoy the movie going experience. Uh, they're launching it from, it'll be from August 14th until October 21st. And it's all starting at 5 PM. It's probably going to be extended. So it's October 21st for now. Uh, they are teaming up with Tribeca film festival to make this happen. And it'll be completely free guys, free drive-ins. Drive-ins are already dirt cheap. I was surprised by how cheap it was, but this is actually completely free. Um, (coughs) <coughs> I have some editing to do this. Okay. Here's a statement from uh, Janie, Janie Whiteside, who is the uh, chief of customer's office, cu- customer service office over at Walmart. She says, we recognize the challenge our customers and their families have faced over the last few months, and we wanted to create an experience where they could come together safely to create new memories. The Walmart drive-in is one small way we're supporting our communities we serve. So, uh, you have to check out, I, ha- I have it on our website, but it's like walmartdrivens.com to see what locations there are. Unfortunately, California, it's not in California at all. Uh, a lot of them are in the South. There are a lot of the Midwest, um, a couple on the East coast and some like on the West side, but not a lot on the West side. Uh, I don't, I don't know. We ha- I have three Walmarts within throwing distance of me, but none of them are having a drive-in theater for some reason. So they have shown a lot of classic movies. They are also showing Black Panther like we watch, but they're also showing E.T., Ghostbusters, Men in Black. Uh, uh, Detective Pikachu, which is a lot of fun. Lego Batman, also good. We got Into the Spider-Verse, Wonder Woman, Back to the Future, Beetlejuice. God, I feel like watching Beetlejuice again. It's so good. Uh, Goonies, Iron Giant. John, you remember Iron Giant? I do. I remember having that on VHS. Good, man. Classic. I just learned recently, Vin Diesel voiced the Iron Giant. Who? Vin Diesel. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Groot. Groot, yeah. (laughs) Groot. That's And much more. Yeah, so there's going to be all kinds of movies. Uh, this is awesome, guys. If you guys so go to the website, go to our, uh, our website if you can't remember that one, uh, and find the link. See where if it's nearby. I would totally go for this, guys. 5 p.m. completely free every single day. That is awesome. There's gonna be a ton of movies. They have a list of the entire list all there. I just list, I picked up some of the good ones here. Um, and drive-ins is a good way to still kind of experience hanging out with your friends in a way. You could get the lawn chairs and get your six feet away from each other. Uh, it's it's a smart way to go. Next week at the drive-ins is Shark Week. The drive is near us. They're showing Jaws, man. So I think I'm going to make a drive. I love me some Jaws. <laughs> it's really good. It's Jaws 1 and 2. So it's like, oh, man, take my money. So could you think of something else that would be good like this? Say say Target wants to compete and get some PR too and want to do something in their parking lots. Is there anything else you can think of other than a drive-in where people could be socially distant and still get out of the house and find some kind of entertainment? That's a good question. Uh, drive-ins are really tailor-made for the situation. Uh, I, the, the first thing that came to my head was carnival games, but that wouldn't quite work. Cause you're going to be still touching the same things. Yeah. Um, it had to be I some, mean, sort you of do some kind of like medium. live shows, uh, a, a concert. To yeah. A concert wouldn't be too yeah. bad. A live concert. Drive up and, yeah. Yeah. It's hard to do in like a parking lot without yeah. having to set up a bunch of gear and stuff, but it'd be cool. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe cool like, if other, if other stores decide to embrace this as well, you'd have to pay for some movie rights and stuff, but. If, you know, other chains decide, you know, this is cool, Costco or something like that with an even bigger parking lot. Uh, yeah. It would be cool to see more places do this, especially up here in Northern California. Come on, somebody pick up come the ball. Guys. Let's go. What about like fireworks and parades? Those could all be outdoors and in your cars. So maybe they could do like a fireworks show. Something yeah. Something like that. I'm I mean, thinking Fourth of July stuff. pose their own risks too. <laughs> yeah. Let's just throw up some explosions. That's fine. That's yeah. We're America. Yeah. We got this. Let's just explode the sky. Yeah. That's a good one, though. Yeah, that's that's a tough question. That's something to think about. Uh, okay, we have a federal judge out of New York that uh, just overturned the Paramount Consent Decrees. This is pretty crazy. So uh, 
federal judge Annalisa Torres um, overturned the 1948 decrees that broke up the studio monopolies, forcing them to depart from their uh, theater. So it used to be like Paramount Studio owned Paramount Theaters and Fox Studios owned Fox Theater. So if I wanted to go watch, say, X-Men, I'd have to go to the Fox Theater. But if I wanted to watch Star Trek, I'd have to go to the Paramount Theater. You know, you'd have to, they, were, they showed their movies in their own theaters. Uh, and she says that the reason she did this, so this was originally meant to break up the monopolies, but she's doing this because she feels like, first off, it's kind of antiquated now. No theater is going to want, no studio is going to want to go out and invest in theaters. They're a dying market. So she kind of knew that, like, that's, that's a waste to even have this law in the books for that. Secondly, she says it's actually kind of being undermined already by this the streaming services. So best example that, that she actually used was Disney can make a hit Disney movie. And then they release it on Disney Plus that you have to pay for to watch. So it's like they have their own theater system. So you have a Disney movie that is released by Disney on the Disney Plus. All the revenue goes straight to Disney from one one product, uh, which is exactly a monopoly in that case. So what do you think about this? Do you think we could see a future where studios are going back to owning theaters? Uh, I don't know. Like she's saying, like it's kind of a dying industry to be investing into. I think especially in the times we live in, like like we were saying, drive-ins might be, might be coming back. That'd be kind of cool to see if those were expanded on. But actual sit-in theaters, even after this pandemic, I don't know if, if they're going to have. They were already on a major decline. Yeah. I don't know if they'll have the traction to really, you know, kick back into year and thrive like they used to. Uh, but if, if a studio is investing in them, I mean, that's, that's probably the only way, like, you know, the GameStop too, if they had a hardcore investor, maybe they could stay around longer. So I think if they're going to survive, that's, that's kind of their only hope, but to start I don't know, like you're saying, like, with the actual studio. Yeah. Yeah. All these streaming services though, who's, who's going to want to go to the theaters when you can just watch it at home with your family and, you know, cook yeah. your own food and it's kind of easier. My but, big you go ahead. Where they where they might sorry where they might have it is is um, vintage movies classics. If you want to pay yeah. five bucks in the mid afternoon and go watch whatever, or pay a membership and have unlimited anytime you want to come in and out, and there's all kinds of older movies playing, that might be good for a lot of people. But I think for the hot new blockbusters and stuff, the the hype of sitting in a movie theater has kind of kind of gone away. I think you're right. Yeah, you're right. There's there is. And I, and I think COVID really knocked it loose a little bit because um, we we saw fiscally that it's actually quite sound to not use theater system. Uh, because of COVID, we had a renegotiation. We talked about this last week uh, of the new theater window. It's now 17 days in, compared to the three months it was before. Um, so we COVID has hit the theater system harder than probably any other industry and actually has changed it for the future, right? Uh I like the idea of them showing retro movies, but we could have that. We could have where if Paramount owns theaters again, only Paramount movies are in there. I will actually wouldn't mind that because I like watching retro movies, especially in theaters even better. Um, that's a good way to kind of bring some money back into the things. I, I still think we should have kept this on the books, though, because I'm really against monopolies as much as I do like that Disney owns Marvel and Sp <laughs> Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. That's real bad. But... The idea of owning the entire supply chain is really that's that's the big problem right there. Uh, so I think it should have stayed in the books, even though it seems antiquated. It doesn't hurt it to still be in the books because uh, we actually had a situation a few months back where Amazon was thinking about buying AMC, and if that happened, Amazon could produce movies they already are for their own Amazon Prime, and then release them straight to theaters. They could say they say they make the next season of Boys, and they're like, oh look, we have the new season of Boys. We're going to do the first three episodes in theaters and then you can watch the other episodes. That's creating the situation where you have such a tight supply chain that's all Amazon owned. You'd have to break that up with an antitrust law. You know, that's that's where that law needs to be kicking in place. And that was that was potentially going to happen under this law. Without this law, there's nothing stopping them. So it's real shaky grounds. I don't know. I'm a I don't, I don't get movie. what's the problem of having that that tight supply chain. I don't get it. Well, then, then you... Because if you have a tight supply chain, if you own everything in the supply chain, right... Uh, then if, then you can drive out competition in different spots. You could change the employee pay and stuff like that mm -hmm. and make it to where you can't be competed with and then you can increase prices. Yeah, so you, you, you could drive prices down so much and you can lower employee wage and everything like that so much. Uh, yeah. And then eventually once everything's up, then you just increase the price because you want everything in the supply chain. You yeah. want a product, you literally can't have any other option. Uh, every time we see it, there's always a lack of innovation from it. 
good example is we had this with uh, DC and Diamond. We talked about them a few times. Uh, yeah. Diamond distributors no need to, compete, to compete. Yeah. So then Diamond distributors was still handing out comic books with the old, like you'd actually like send in paperwork saying like we need these comic books or would call in and make your order. Instead of having like a nice kiosk where say I go in and I want the upcoming Negan Lives 3, I can go to a kiosk and it's, that can't happen under Diamond Distributor having a monopoly because they're like, nah, we liked the way it worked in 93. We're going to stick with the 93 model. And they were. That's exactly what they were doing. Um, so th there's all kinds of hampering that happens with, with monopolies. And I think this law should have stayed in place. Um, but there is a good question there. Should we look at Disney... Or any of these other companies having their own streaming service and production company, could that be considered a monopoly future in the future? Well, so I don't know. It wouldn't be a monopoly because they don't own all of movies, right? Just all of their movies and how they go out. That's yeah, that's it right can, there. Yeah. So if Netflix were to drive out everybody, then that's a monopoly. Yeah. Like yeah, streaming services when Netflix was the first, if they were the only ones to have it and only ones who could have it, then yeah, it's a monopoly. That makes sense. Yeah, so I think Hulu for a long time kept them from being a monopoly. And now we have a yeah. bunch of streaming services. But it was like basically Netflix and Hulu were the only two out, big dogs out there. Um, that's that's it. That's a very good point. Okay, that's it right there. Huh, interesting. It's an interesting thing. We're in, a, we're in such a time of change in the film mm -hmm. industry and, and TV industry. Uh, it's neat to see what pulls ahead and, and yeah. what's going to come of this. And you got to weigh the pros and cons because like I kind of – I don't want to see movie theaters gone completely. You like to right. go every once in a while, but you don't want to go all the time. You don't want to pay, you know, 50 bucks every time you go to the movies or something like that for one ticket. So is this what it takes? Would we have to sacrifice a little bit of that, that, uh, whatever you call it, that competition and everything mm -hmm. to keep them alive so they're there when you want them? Or is it worth just everyone's got to have their opportunity? So let's just let them die. So I yeah, it's hard to say. It is hard to say. What I had told Squeaks last week was uh, I think movie theaters should be similar to the way that comic book the uh, stores work to where uh, me and him, we both have like Marvel Unlimited and stuff like that in DC Universe so that we could read, you know, every flash we want to. But, oh, there's a new Walking Dead colored book that I want to get that's all in color. I'm going to go to the, the comic book shop and pick that one up. It's a bit of more of a collector's item. So maybe for so the way that would work for movies is oh, the next Trolls movie's out. We'll watch that at home. Like, oh, the next whatever. Oh, but wait, I want to watch Black Widow in theaters. So that one I'm going to go to the theaters for. So maybe you go for like the special movies to the theaters, but most movies you can watch at home just fine and you'll pay the extra money for it at home. I think yeah. that would be fair. Because we, I mean, we have, near me, I think I have like seven theaters within 25 miles, 30 miles of mm -hmm. me. I mean, that's just too many. That doesn't make sense to have that many theaters in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. All right, last bit of news. This is real exciting. We have Animaniacs reboot coming to Hulu. Uh, this is going to be produced by Steven Spielberg and uh, and done through his Amblin studio again. It's going to be 13 episodes, the first of which is going to be premiering on Friday, November 20th. Animaniacs, fantastic series. Uh, we had Pinky the Brain come from them and all kinds of other things. Uh, I love this series, man. What's your favorite like mini sketch from this series? Uh, the little girl um, that With the keeps big dog? asking questions. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That dog uh, was like trying to take care of her and she like walk off and do stupid stuff all the time. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Uh, and Pinky in the Brain is, you know, hilarious. Of course. Classic. Of course. Uh, oh, I yeah. liked uh, that old, I think it was an old chipmunk that was like this cranky old chipmunk that would like um, tell kids to like, ah, kids, you don't know how good you have it. She used to have that kind of a voice or whatever and she'd just be a pain in the butt. And there was these two hippos that were like too rich and they like lived in posh hotel, uh, posh studio and stuff like that. It would be all like treadmills or whatever. They were really fun too. I, there's all kinds of small little sketches. I, I'm excited to see these characters come back. Um, yeah. There was that one chicken. Oh man. And as a kid, I didn't understand how hilarious it was, but as an adult, I do where they would have like entire movie scenes, but there was this one giant chicken just standing in there and it'd be like a Western and the giant chicken would walk in and like, no, not you again. And like, they, they'd like, and they'd like, the chicken like, bark, bark, and like, those are fighting words. And like, they would have a whole movie scene around this chicken just standing there. And he would walk off and it was like, he killed 15 people. <laughs> it was like these weird <laughs> things that would happen uh, with just a chicken standing in the scene. And so um, as a kid, I was just like, Meh, it's a chicken. And now I'm just like, oh, that's a commentary. <laughs> like, there's so many things you can read into it now uh, that I'm pretty excited about. It's, it, I'm glad to have Animaniacs back. That's classic. Is there any, okay, outside of Gargoyles. Okay, well, it's been a bit since we've actually mentioned Gargoyles. So that's pretty good for us. Outside right. of Gargoyles, what 90s cartoon would you want to see a reboot of? A reboot. 90s cartoon. 
Mm. Maybe Hey Arnold. I think they could do. I think they could do actually a, a cool live action version of Hey Arnold nowadays. Yeah, that's a good idea. That'd probably popular. Yeah, that's a good one. I I wouldn't mind seeing. Uh, uh, hey Arnold's a good one. <laughs> actually, now I'm thinking about it. You could actually kind of really modernize it with everybody's got cell phones now and stuff like that. Yeah. As, I was good. thinking Doug, but basically for the same thing because oh. now like Doug's all about like having kid problems and growing up in this world and using your imagination to escape it. But a Hey Arnold does the same thing where it's kind of this like you're just an average kid trying to just get through everyday life. So that's pretty good. Hopefully we see more. Animaniacs is a classic, so it's always good to have that one back. All right, Mm -hmm. guys, that's it for the news, but we're going to go off real quick with a Fall uh, Fall Guys game uh, review. So Fall Guys came out on the 3rd. Just a quick premise of it. It's this thing where you have 60 people go into these little mini games. There are races, soccer games. It's really kind of fun and weird. Um, And uh, the idea is like, so for the first one, it's a race. And uh, they... I think it's like the first 40 to pass the finish line, go to the next round and the 20 leave. And then you just keep doing that. Like, oh, it's a soccer game where it's, you know, three teams competing in soccer, uh, two teams go through and one team doesn't. It's where eventually you're the last guy standing out of 60. And they're all these dorky, weird games. You're like these big giant bean characters that are kind of like fumbling around. It's a lot of fun. Um, this game's only 20 bucks and it's taking the internet by storm. People are going nuts for this game. Uh, I gave it a B on our Instagram. You guys can check out the Instagram uh, grades. I gave it a B, but really it's, it's could quickly become an A. Um, one of the big, the reasons it got to be is because you could queue up with, I think four players. Um, but there's a way to get around it. So I was playing with six, which is really, you got to play with friends guys with friends is where it's at. Um, you check to see like, oh, our loading screen says that it's at 54 and at 55. If the other guy has the same loading screen numbers, you're on the same game. It's real, real kind of weird that way. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to watch. It's super fun to watch streamers play it because it's just wacky fun. And it's weird. It's got like, it's hard to explain because it's just a bunch of look like, like jelly beans running around with weird costumes on. Cause you can unlock costumes as you go. I have like a big wolf mask on right now, but I really want to get the pineapple. Um, it's a lot of fun. So I'm giving it a B. You guys check it out. It's only 20 bucks. It's fall, guys. I know you've heard of it because the internet is blowing up over this game. It's so huge right now. It came from Devolver Studios. They always make good games. This is actually just got announced today. Their uh, best-selling game, uh, launch game. Um, and it's uh, it's actually free on the PlayStation. Thank you to uh, Wednesday Pool List. Guys, check out Wednesday Pool List. Uh, they're on our Twitch right now. They just gave me a reminder of that. So it is free on PlayStation. 20 bucks on Steam. And uh, if you guys play, hit me up. I'm, we're always we're going to be streaming that. Uh, we're always down to play that. We're going to be streaming that next Friday. Yeah, community night Friday is going to be fall, guys. So come by by and see all the streamers playing that. Uh, but that's it for the podcast this week, guys. So uh, Jonathan, anything else you want to leave the fans with? That's it. That's all I got. Yeah, just go check out audibletrial.com uh, backslash Geek Freaks. I think that's about it. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, kind of a short one for us this week. Just been crazy, but we'll be back with you guys next week. Remember, we got one more week. We're extending the uh, book club one week uh, and then get in on those votes for the two Emmy noms that we're putting up this week. Uh, And we'll see you guys next week. You'll have a good week. Bye. Bye. All right. Stop the recording.